You may be uh, surprised that I am connecting the U.S. geopolitical war against Russia to the subject of precarity. I hope that I succeed in making this connection clear in the course of my lecture. The French sociologist Jean Boutelga coined the phrase the intelligence of evil. He wrote a book of the same name. I would like to use this phrase at the beginning of the lecture as a title for a principle, a method, and specifically for the New World Order's doctrine, uh, the shock doctrine. A shock doctrine, also known as a neoliberal shock strategy, was developed under the auspice of the American economist Milton Friedman and the Chicago Boys. It was introduced in Chile for the first time success successfully in 1973. Later, the doctrine was applied to Venezuela, Iraq, in Syria, in Libya, in Greece, and finally in Ukraine. In the following, I would like to present the intelligence of the shock strategy as the intelligence of evil. The economic political shock strategy is equal to a post political type of war. Um, this is uh, unfortunately executed in three double strategies programs with the goal of euphemizing geopolitical and economic interests as a political mission as well enforcing these interests with military and meteorologic technologies. Each of the shock strategy three programs include a double, a double strategic war waiting technology in two sides, a visible and an invisible side, a war with hidden warfare and with meteorologic propaganda, uh, propagandistic surface for the exterior. Next. The invisible, uh, the invisible program is on the right-hand side. First of all, to declare a state of uh, a state of emergency as an enabling act, a pretext for a government cup or regime of terror or civil war. This first hidden technology is the technology of regime change. Second, during a civil war or during a governmental state of emergency to attack, control or manipulate population and at the hotspot with operations uh, or during a state of emergency to attack, control man uh, and manipulate population at the hotspot with, uh, with operations like in Ukraine or especially in Donbass now de russification anti-terrorist operations against population in East Ukraine, gentrification, etc. to the annihilation of cultural and historical memory, collective memory and values, social structures and fields. This second one, the hidden technology, is the technology of social splitting and disorientation. Third, <clears throat> to finally enable the submission of the population and former leaders to annex the land and government, social structures and public mandates. The annexation of resources as a security for super majors leadership on the global market for US control of the petrol dollar and the petrol industry. The super majors are ExxonMobil, Chevron, Shell, British Petrol, Total. This third hidden technology is the technology of big oil, of big business. That's the goal of New World Order according to the Wol Wolfowitz Doctrine and other neoliberal US doctrines. In the other hand, on the right side, are the visible programs that have function to cover and detract from the invisible programs. The visible programs are in first left first to create an enemy, to stage an enemy, and to stage an enemy attack as false like operation like Crimea annexion annexation or like shooting the MH17 or like the permanent invasion of the Russian army in Ukraine 
or like 9-11. This is the technology of creating an enemy target. Second, on the right, to synchronize all media, it means the media inside of occupation and outside of the hotspot, the leading media uh, of the alliances of you in Europe, which the goal of an international synchronizing campaign of creative ideologies and shock propaganda to clarify the enemy with the use of demagogy like dem demonization of the one hand and glorification of the creators of the war. On the other hand, this is the technology of disinformation and the search to privatize all public matters and mandates like the press, health service, like education, schools, university infrastructures, museum, libraries, streets, railways, engineering, the food industry, primary production, and, and, and. This is the technology called democratization. The next one. Yes. These programs, <laughs> visible and invisible, are enforcing a complex mode of war, a post-modern, post-politic war. So we can see at the side of the invisible covered strategy, the war of, of aggression, psychological war, the war of plunder and conquest, as well as the opposite, the visible or public program, staging war, the propaganda war and the economic war. Next, please. Next, please. In the perception of the public, perception of the public, all types of war fall into one space of indistinguishable. This is a very, uh, very complicated, indistinguishable war, in which the role of mediocracy has predominant and leading function. What is mediocracy? I would like to illustrate mediocrity based on three examples. So I don't want to repeat this definition. Yeah, you can read, you can read it in English. Please read it. I go on in my text. In the chart, you can see three examples of um, the type of staging war. The staging of false flag operation is only transmitted through media. That's important. Without media, no staging war, no staging enemy. All three examples show a model of shock propaganda. The shock, the shock word <coughs> on the front pages of these three magazines is the word arsonist. Everyone knows that an arsonist, an arsonist's job is to spark a world war. In the first example left, the front cover of the magazine Völkische Beobachter from 1933 is written Now the crackdown is ruthless. In the next example middle, the front cover of the French magazine Match from September 2001, The War. The World Trade Center on Monday, 11th of September 2001 in New York. You can see a burning tower and today everyone knows, independent of the real cause of destruction, that after that crash or arson, the global war on terror has begun. In the third example, right, the front cover of the magazine Der Spiegel from the 10th of March this year, 2014. The arsonist, who will stop Putin? You can see President Putin as, the, as a monstrous, monstrous Goliath with the puppets, the German Chancellor Merkel with a little flag, and the US President Obama with a warning forefinger are standing at the feet. The headline on the title is written uh, as follows Beyond the Limit. Russia occupied the Crimea and broke international law. The government in Kiev helpless in the reaction. Europe and the United States are bubis and will weather diplomatic pressure or sanctions are the answer. By the way, to it. Why is important for us and for our standing of precarious consequences in society to deconstruct the war technology of the neoliberal liberal shock strategies, the geopolitical war and global leadership and surveillance. 
because we have to analyze the intelligence level within the double strategic program, the pathology of psychological war technologies and the shock propaganda within the info wars. The main psychological war strategies. The main um, psychological war strategies are the mediocratic technologies that I call splitting to protect. I think this is a. Uh, I'm sorry. I think this is the next one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. So we are almost already in the precarious uh, scene block. <laughs> the me psychological war strategies are the mediocratic technology that I call splitting to protect in German Spaltungsabwehr. Only with this techno technology is a protection of one's own criminal acts in me. The criminal act of the representatives and deciders of a geopolitical uh, resource were all possible. The splitting to protect technology covers war deeds and transfer them one to one from the actual actor to the constructed enemy, to the phantom enemy or false, flag, uh, false enemy. It is denial of one's own action and lies as a mean of foreign accusation. This is done until the well, so this is done until the public accepts the concept of the enemy picture as a real enemy. As I already mentioned, in the perception of the public, all types of war fall into, in together into one space of in, 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 indistinguishable war. Through shock pro propaganda, the war will be totally projected onto the constructed enemy. This is why the propaganda war is simultaneously a psychological war. And that's also the intelligence of evil that Budweya speaks of. Next. Sure. <coughs> I now want to show you a series of shock propaganda that manifestate, uh, manifestated the constructed or false en enemy. Countless examples have appeared since March this year. At the latest, this is just an example. Next place. Next place. 20, 29th of August, Zeit Online, Rus Russia is operating in Ukraine, or Russia is operating war in Ukraine. Next. Next. Please. <laughs> 31st of August, it built, it, it built. Putin is waking war. Next. 1st of September, at site online. The separatists in Ukraine are leading Putin's war. The next. This one, yeah. Uh, 1st of September, at build. Putin reaches Europe. The 1st of, of September, in the site. Novorossiya, Putin's new realm and how the West is arming. The next. <coughs> the next, please. Fourth of September in Stern. Why Putin wants to create a new empire in a brutal campaign. The next, please. Okay. And so on. As I told already, there are numerous. Um, countless examples in that way this year that I have already a whole archive and one man. Uh, we have to seriously ask why we should become precarious or pre uh, perception victims through this shock propaganda <laughs> strategy. What is the story behind the story and uh, what are the consequences for society and for the subject? Precarity is everywhere. This is a title of an essay by the French sociologist Pierre Bourdieu in which he defines the extent of the term precarity. Precarity is not just a reference to employment. 
as it often assumed, but, is, uh, but also to social conditions, integrity, perception, and life space, as we call Lebensraum, of subjects. In Fra uh, the French sociologist Isabelle Nouré speaks of precariousness as a regime. She differentiated between precariousness, precarity, and governmental precarization. Precarity is thus a form of being in insecurity, vulnerability, and danger. This must be ver verified as a social symptom beyond labor market position, a symptom of contingency in society. Next one, please. The, eff the effect or effects of uh, psychopolitical, uh, uh, psych psychological warfare can of course be perceived through each media everywhere and, is it, uh, and uh, it is driving individuals and subjects to disorientation. As I mentioned, the intelligence of evil infiltrates social organs. It means brains through shock propaganda and breaking news and enforces subjective and social reactions such as helplessness, shock of perception, splitting dynamics, regression, on up to protest, heavy criticism and resistance. Yes, and the state of uh, contingency in society at all. So next picture, please. Sorry? Uh, yeah, the time is clear on the time graph, so please yes. don't allow us how much yes. more time to finish. To finish, so I'm, I'm finishing. Uh, yes, I know, okay. Uh, this is the next one. Um, in addition to the intersubjective or collective and social consequences of the effect of psychological warfare, I want to focus on deprivation as a subjective effect, deprivation. Many people have the feeling that something isn't right in the surrounding and that their communication space and understanding are rapidly changing. Permanent vulnerability to destructive and misleading headlines leads to a loss of habit of security. So, just according to uh, uh, the, the German sociologist Isabel Neumann, and she created uh, the word of uh, the spiral of silence. And uh, the spiral of silence is an effect that uh, do you involve yourself in, uh, you move yourself in the expression of silence or no speaking, um, and uh, it's a hidden and hidden technology. Please, the next one. So he, these are some examples of um, deprivation, but I don't speak more about these, just to show them. Mobbing, the next one. The next one, please. Splitting or uh, spiral of si silence uh, at the example. Um, I would like uh, to cite that the Spiegel uh, department's head revolt against the editor-in-chief Wolfgang Büchner that occurred due to the cover Stop Putin Now from July 28th in 2014. And the interesting is firing was the result. Yes, And uh, this is uh, mobbing, then firing. And the next, please. The next, please. Yes. As another example, I would like to cite uh, the last governmental decision by Chancellor Merkel for sanctions against Russia, considering that more than half of half of German population is against uh, the propaganda campaign and san sanctions against Russia. This executive act is a betrayal. Many people, more than half of the people, feel it like a betrayal against the German people. Next, please. And that, that's the final. That's so I would like to summarize uh, the report with, the, with this definition. Deprivation is a modality of precarization that confirms that we all live in a permanent contingency in an increasingly arbitrary society of, precari of uh, precarization. We have also to notice that several dis diseases could be in consequences for contingency and disorientation like depression, alcoholism, drug or pharma consumption. The most risky groups nowadays are the youth. And uh, that's what I want to say for 
precarity in connection to uh, psychological and info wars we received in Germany. Thank you.